would say it's one of the biggest challenges uh, Bala World had to experience to date. Like it's um, everything about our job has to do with interaction, interaction between the dancers, interactions with the audience, but also audience between each other. So suddenly this con concept of isolation and not being able to be next to someone closer than two meters or more um it brings the questions of like future of the theater like um is there gonna be a fear to go to the theater is there gonna be like what does it make us dancers if there's more permanent consequences to this situation um so thinking about all that i found was quite um um well worrying and uh kind of questioning that you know for for me being a dancer and being a performer it's all about sharing like it's i create and i work to share to share with the audience um on stage live in that in the moment of performance and uh all of that is taken away so apart from the physically not being able to move and missing that so much. I also miss, I miss the audience. I miss being able to create in that moment. Um, I mean, amazingly enough, uh, it's, there's a lot of opportunities spring up out of the situations. And yeah, I think creativity went over the roof with the, from discovering things you can do online and how we can communicate or train through online but also leading to very interesting new collaborations and ideas springing up and like as many as limitations as they are that we are uh, isolated in our houses but there's also this uh, massive new opportunities of realizing how much you can do online which connects you to people you haven't been able to collaborate before uh, because of distance or something but also time I, there's, I've actually ended up reconnecting with so many choreographers, composers, singers and friends I wanted to collaborate with for a long time, but just never had a chance. Um, so yeah, my schedule actually got filled up quite a bit, very fast. So I think that's, that's the positive side of it all. And hopefully I'll come out with a few very interesting creations out of that. Um. Many ways in which the situation of the COVID-19 has impacted me, um, well, definitely uh, it has impacted me professionally. Uh, of course, like every other dancer in the world right now, we had to um, stop performing at the Royal Opera House. So um, I've been missing the, uh, many upcoming Swan Lake performances and uh, Prodigal Sound performances and all the rest of the season that we were supposed to be doing and and also choreographically like I was um, we were quarantined a week before um, the opening of International Draft Works where I was representing the Royal Ballet this year so I've um, we've I've, I've almost completed the piece and then it never uh, it never that never came to light it, it obviously has impacted me personally and and obviously it's very difficult for us to to keep in shape during these times uh, uh, it, everything is so uncertain so sometimes you wake up with a sort of um it, with it's a very surreal atmosphere of of what am i supposed to do today other than just keeping in shape so thankfully the royal the royal ballet has provided us with online classes that uh, we take every day whether it's ballet class or strengthen conditioning so um, I, I, it's great to feel the support of the company in this in, in this moment in time and yeah there, I feel like in the Royal Valley we're very much like a family and it's very nice to feel like we are still we're still a family despite all this and obviously this has impacted me personally on a, on, a, on many levels because I am I'm originally Italian so um, I obviously I've been following the situation in Italy very closely. Uh, I really feel for my country what's happening out there. And particularly, I come from a small town in between the city of Bergamo and Brescia, which for people that don't know, is the hardest hit city in Italy. And so far, the hardest hit, uh, the hardest hit 
city in Europe. So it's very hard to see everyone, like my family, friends and everybody around just sort of uh, in the middle of this storm uh, and what's happening in, over there. It's, it's, it's a little bit surreal. Um, thankfully, my family is all well, so they're, 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 they're healthy, but you know, there's always a worry of whether they're going to be, they're going to, to incur into, uh, into, into this virus and how that might impact them. Um, I, I live by myself. Uh, unfortunately, my, girlf- my girlfriend was stranded uh, outside of the country, so wasn't able to come back. Um, so, you know, it has been a bit challenging. Uh, it has been a bit challenging um, facing this isolation, mostly on my own. I am lucky that I have the support of my friends and colleagues from the Royal Ballet, which have been very supportive and I've, I speak to them regularly and we all try to sort of um, uh, get the situation, pass the situation all together. Because of the situation, we couldn't properly finish Creatures Creation, which is the new Arkham Cans piece for ENB. We couldn't open it on the 1st of April. We don't know what will happen of Swan Lake in the round. We don't know if we'll be able to go to Paris in July. And about my career, I'm called a ballet, so it doesn't have a huge impact on my career. I'm fine. My sisters and I are playing online together and I think we've never spent that much time together in ages. Last time was probably 10 years ago when we were all living in my parents' house. So this is really nice. To keep my sanity, I read a lot, especially in the garden under the sun. Mm. I bake, not a lot though, otherwise I would be rolling in the studio when everything will be back to normal, but I still bake. Uh, I'm currently self-isolating in the UK, and that's because I had a knee surgery in March. Uh, so, as you can see, I'm still in a brace. Um, I'm not allowed to fly for another week or two, so by that point it will probably be at the peak of the virus, so it's going to be safer if I stay in the UK to continue on my rehab. But yeah, I'll show you what I've been up to uh, while I've been self-isolating. So I had a microfracture procedure done to the trochlear cartilage behind my kneecap. And it's normally about 20 weeks to come back from that. And I've done most of that in uh, self-isolation. So far with it, um, everything's been going really well. I'm working with the physiotherapist from Northern Ballet Company. And we've been doing three sessions a day, six days a week for five weeks now. And at week six, I can take off the brace, which will be nice, and keep going with my rehab. At around week 12, I'll be able to start doing some ballet classes, which will be really good. Um, I think by that point, there's going to be a lot of uh, online classes available, so I'm going to have a big selection to choose from. But so far, actually, the process has been really nice for me and a really enjoyable experience. And I think I'm really getting the most from it that I can. Uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, work as well on my mental health and I think I'm definitely going to come back uh, much stronger than I was before, mentally and physically. And I really cannot wait to be back on stage. We've been back from tour around three weeks ago and from that tour, unfortunately, we've had a couple of people test positive, some dancers and some staff. And since then, immediately after actually, we've been quarantined for two weeks. So that time has now passed, now it has been three weeks after the fact, but we are still stay at home, we are working from home, our theatre has provided us with a piece of Marley and we all have it taped to our floors in the kitchen or on the living room space and we've all been taking class in the morning with a couple of ballet masters who have been so kind to set up uh, online video classes for us. Um, I don't think our neighbours are very happy about that, but, you know, it's just one hour of the day to keep us fit and physically active. Um, The most of the time I've spent reading, catching up on cleaning, uh, doing those things that in our busy, hectic lifestyle we have 
not enough time for sometimes and uh, I've spent a lot of time also self-reflecting um, getting to know the situation that is coronavirus uh, especially since it came from China my parents live in China and there has been a lot of information and misinformation as we all know but um, I think for the most part I just want to let the dance community know that we need to um, stay strong, we need to stay patient and the, the most positive thing I've seen I think in the past three weeks is the um, overall solidarity of the dance community in general. It is outstanding and it's always nice to see this level of artistry and creativity and coming together that um, is pushed on us when we have a situation like this that challenges us. So I wish everyone the most health, all the best wishes and um, patience in this time. We will make this through. So I'm currently on my fourth week of not going to the studios and rehearsing and performing as well. Birmingham Royal Ballet was still due to go on tour to have one one more week of Swan Lake, uh, which obviously we couldn't go ahead with. What has been amazing to see is so many dancers and companies and teachers and coaches um, putting so much online so then we can keep learning and continue to be inspired. Other things I've been getting up to are I've been, I've been carrying on my own workouts from home and I've had my own structure of doing that um, to kind of work all, all the parts of the body. What I would say to people in this position, so anyone who well, a dancer or anyone who that is active on a day-to-day -day basis, keep your chin up. Um, better days are gonna come. It's not easy staying at home all day, um, but it allows you to focus, reprogram, and, and almost take it a little bit like rehab to kind of reflect on, you know, obviously what, what's coming up, but also um, what's, what's been. I've personally taken this time as a little bit of a detox allowed me to just focus on myself, um, the things that I want to do, forward planning. It's been quite a uh, an insightful um, event um, in my own life to be able to take time out to do this because I, I, you know, I thought to myself until I retire from dancing, this is probably the longest stopgap I'll ever have. So it's the time now to really set those goals um, and to forward plan um, and to and to learn in other ways. So we're just coming to the end of the third week of lockdown in the UK. Uh, very peculiar time that we all find ourselves in. Um, we actually got lucky, I suppose, Matt Northern Ballet. We managed to open our brand new show. We premiered Geisha on the 14th of March. Um, and then by the 17th of March, the theatre closed and then kind of everything was a domino effect from then on. Um, my situation is, I suppose, quite unique. I came back in December, having been on maternity leave, um, and I made the decision that I would retire at the end of this season. So the longer that this new way of living um, continues, the realisation is sinking in that actually that um, opening night, that premiere, um, is now potentially or was my last time on stage with Northern Ballet um, after 18 years with them. So yeah, that's a very, um, very mixed feelings about that. Um, and especially right now, everything feels very uh, we're just waiting for things to return to normal and to kind of get back into the studio. But like I say, the longer that this goes on, I potentially am not going back into the studio. Uh, and I feel that somehow this will change our industry for quite a long while to come. But if I've learned anything, it's that uh, dancers, theatre, arts folk, are superbly resilient and incredibly creative and if any if any group of people can bounce back it's definitely us so as um kind of unstable things feel at the moment um 
I can't help but feel hopeful. And like I say, I will be grateful for that opening night for the rest of my life because it was incredibly special. I think us, the artists, the musicians, the audience, we all knew that this was coming ahead of us. Um, and so everybody felt very focused on that one evening, which transpired to be incredibly special. So, yeah. We were just about to start uh, with our tour, our Dutch tour of, uh, of the junior company's touring program, Unboxing Ballet 2, uh, and our junior company here at Dutch National Ballet. Luckily, they were able to, to at least premiere and do a second performance in Amsterdam. Uh, of this beautiful program in which they dance ballets by five great choreographers from Kenneth McMillan to George Balanchine, Hans van Manen, uh, Eric Gauthier, and we had a beautiful new work by, uh, by Charlotte Edmonds. Uh, so at least it premiered, but then right the week after, um, things deteriorated very quickly and, and theatres were closed and, uh, and we were basically all sent home uh, almost at the same time. Um, and uh, also schools closed. Thus, National Ballet Academy. Uh, uh, that uh, we had to we had to close the school uh, quite quickly uh, as well. And amazingly, uh, within a week, uh, we managed to have 150 students uh, uh, of the school training at home. Uh, we're we're teaching uh, from our kitchens. Uh, every uh, every teacher in every class within their own class uh, group at their normal class times, actually, uh, through Zoom, through Teams, or whatever app uh, works. Uh, and we have a whole schedule for that. Uh, it's, it's amazing how that's uh, been able to come about in such a short amount of time. And some other amazing things have happened. Uh, uh, the, the company is also taking class uh, through Zoom every day. Uh, and, uh, and in the theater, uh, the technicians have, uh, have been amazing in in, in cutting up old uh, old ballet floor into into pieces so that uh, so that all the dancers could have a bit of ballet floor at home uh, to work on and and the technicians have also built uh, ballet bars uh, the people that normally build our sets they've built ballet bars so that uh, so that dancers can have a bar at home and don't just have to all onto their kitchen sink. Um, it's also amazing to see how the whole um, how the whole ballet world and the whole art world is really pulling together. The whole network, schools, companies, dancers from around the world, talking to each other and sharing ideas uh, to get through this period. And hopefully that will also take us into when things get better again, that we keep sharing, uh, which we were of course doing, but we can always do more of. So let's take a positive out of that. And last but not least, um, Let's stick to our daily routine. I get up every morning around 7.30 and at nine o'clock I'm in my kitchen uh, to teach my group of uh, boys, the, ba uh, the Bachelor One uh, boys at Dutch National Ballet Academy. So I teach them from nine till 10 every morning. So that gets my day started. And then I'm quite busy uh, planning all the things that, that might or might not happen now. But I think a routine is really important. I hope you're staying well. I hope you have a good routine and I hope you're also thinking about all these beautiful things that, uh, that we will hopefully very soon be able to do together again on stages around the world and share, um, share with our audience. Take care. We have much later than other countries. Uh, obviously it's not as bad as it is uh, in Spain, Italy and uh, wars in China. But uh, I must say the government here has taken a very, very quick decision to lock down everything and to keep uh, all the citizens and residents safe. At the moment we're leaving it uh, okay. Um, a lot of people um, have families uh, away from here, uh, so they're not able to, to go and see them. Uh, my father recently um, has passed away uh, because of COVID-19 um, on the 12th of March um, and I was not able to fly to Italy to see him and to support my mom and my brother. Uh, it was devastating news 
But the sad thing is that he died alone. Nobody was there to hold his hands and to say goodbye, um, which is very, very uh, sad. And it, it is happening a lot to a lot of people in this world. I'm very lucky because I'm here with my child and husband, and the situation is not as terrible. Um, but obviously, we are conscious of uh, taking care of ourselves and keep safe. As you can see, this is my studio, and uh, I, to be honest, I have actually been training on my own for the last five, six years since I became freelance. But I've learned a lot and I've become much more creative. Um, I've learned more about my body and, and I understood how much I love dancing. Think about how wonderful it is going to be when everything is going to be back normal. And it will be normal. You know, for centuries we had war and other illnesses, other crises, but we always got through. I decided to come back to Brazil after the theater closed in St. Petersburg. And uh, I really thought that with the lockdown, I wouldn't be able to see anyone in Russia. And that would be really hard for me. So. I, with my family, decided that the best option would be to come back to Brazil as soon as I could because all the airports were gonna close so it was a pretty fast decision and I had not really time to think about it so I just came back but now looking at the situation and how far it's gone I think I've, I've made the best decision Everything was so quick. I mean, in Russia, one day we were working and uh, at the same day, we had an order from the government saying that we couldn't perform. And then we got to perform. It was the last show. It was the Young Choreography Workshop, and which I've, I've, I haven't danced anything in this performance, but I had rehearsals that day and uh, it was quite late comparing to everyone else around the world and then the first decision was that we would uh, not work for 10 days but then each week it got longer and longer and longer um i'm trying to use this time to heal all my injuries because during the season i basically have no time to to rest so now I you know I want to take my time for myself to stay with my family and not do much I've done some classes by myself in the ballet studio here in my city it's pretty close to my home so I don't have contact with people I go there alone or with my sister who is also a dancer I had a very nice and uh, busy plan for this month I would uh, have three leading roles this month and some other solos that the full cast wasn't out yet. I don't think we need to be sad. It's a, it's a hard time, but uh, I'm sure it's gonna pass soon, hopefully. And I'm wishing everyone a good time with your loved ones to keep safe and yeah. About a month ago, the Australian government started issuing directives restricting mass gatherings and over the last few weeks the whole country has moved into a period of social distancing and isolation measures. On the 1st of April, the collective was meant to be premiering three, our first performance season of 2020. It's an evening of three remarkable works by Hoffa Schechter, Melanie Lane and Jack Lister. We were heartbroken that we had to postpone the performances but the health, well-being and safety of our collective, our audiences and the broader community is our utmost priority. The whole collective is now working from home. We've been really transparent, prioritising communication as a team. 
I've wanted to alleviate anxiety and stress as much as possible in this complex time. Our goal has been and is keeping the company employed, stable and cared for in this tumultuous time for the arts. The seismic shift we're all experiencing in the nature of our interpersonal behaviour due to these social distancing measures necessitates ingenuity and adaptation. The collective will be introducing a host of new initiatives to allow us to digitally facilitate our creative and training processes for not just our professional dancers, but students and the community at large. If anyone wants to connect with us, we're doing so through our social platforms and all you have to look for is hashtag collectively connected. On a personal level, I'm grateful to have the capacity to stay connected to my family and friends, although it is through Zoom and FaceTime and other platforms. In terms of keeping myself grounded, I do so through daily breath work, yoga, and I also try and get my heart rate up with either a run, hit training or skipping each morning. And despite still being very busy with working from home, my go-to for unwinding is definitely either music or reading. But I did also buy a thousand piece puzzle of Klimt's The Kiss, which has been a very uh, calming undertaking. The first cases of COVID-19 were reported at the end of January, but stuff started getting very serious in mid-March, and that's when Toronto officials ordered everyone to stay inside and self-isolate. Restrictions are more and more here every day. Police have actually started getting involved and taking action for those who don't follow the rules. The restrictions were imposed at the end of March, for everyone to stay inside um, other than to go out for necessity like groceries, food, etc. Restaurants are closed, but some places deliver and gatherings over five people are strictly prohibited and I'm sure that number will get lower. I've been injured for the past few months, so rehabbing is a little bit difficult by staying inside and not having my team beside me to guide me but I've been doing lots of Pilates and fitness to stay in shape and to keep my body in tune. As I've been injured, I've taken up piano lessons, which I love because if I wasn't a dancer, I think I would be a classical concert pianist. I mean, I'm not good enough, but I have a huge passion for classical music and I find that it is the most gratifying thing for the soul. I also love going on walks and exploring nature because we're still allowed to do that here. So I have this field behind my house where there's a lot of hills and I just bring my headphones and I found this spot that's like the highest hill and you have a view of like all the other hills in nature. So I just soak that moment in and I listen to my music and sometimes improv and pretend like I'm having my own concert on top of the hill for my imaginary audience. So. I'm grateful that we have really good weather here lately and I can enjoy that moment. I would like to share with you uh, personal experiences within the company in the past weeks. We've had eight cases of corona within the company. The good news is that they are all well, they're all healthy, but being in quarantine for two weeks has had its effect on especially the dancers. And right now I'm in the process of moving forward, if I may say that, within the confines of being at home. The world is on home office modus, and we are, I would say, home training modus. I offer the company ballet classes every day, live, via streaming. I offer the company yoga classes. We have a physiotherapist that put together a program, especially for the ladies and the gentlemen of the company, uh, to strengthen all their uh, muscles, which cannot be used in close confinements. And I think uh, it's important more than ever to have contact, have contact via internet, via Facebook, however you contact each other. I think it's important to put out the message that there will be an end. I'm inspired every morning when I wake up because I have the pictures of all those faces, those beautiful artists at home, doing their best, striving to reach the next step in our lives, which is getting out of 
our apartments, our homes, our offices, and getting onto our stage to deliver this beautiful art to the world and to put a smile on each and every person that watches. My heart goes out to so many people suffering at this time. And we all at Stuttgart Ballet embrace you with our love, with our care, and hopefully soon with our art. I didn't know at the beginning what I was going to do with my um, once a day getting out of the house kind of rule. And I found that running is, is one of my new hobbies, for example. So I started running uh, two weeks ago, which I never imagined that I was going to, to like um, running so much. But I'm quite enjoying it now and I'm doing about five, six kilometers a day. I'm trying to go um, a bit um, higher with my target every day, but it's quite hard. And I think it's a very good way to keep your body and your stamina uh, in good condition. So I found that as a new hobby and, and that is thanks to coronavirus. So that is something positive. My career has been affected. Uh, I was supposed to be in Spain today, for example. Um, next next week, we were supposed to start a set of, of galas, uh, um, a little European tour, uh, co-produced by Ballet Nacional de Cuba celebrating the 100 years of Alicia Alonso. So I was supposed to be on that little tour um, doing those galas, which of course it will not happen. So hopefully that will also happen next year um, or next season. I think in a positive side, I, 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 I also using this time to, to give time to my body to recover from the last 20 seasons. <laughs> I do keep in contact with my family every day. Um, this is one of the hardest uh, thing for me at this point because all my family is, is um, in Miami. They live in America, it's quite far away. I'm not allowed to go there. They're not allowed to come here. This has been um, a, a time of reflection on, in humanity in a way. And I think people have realized the importance of, of human contact, the importance of, of being together, of, of having someone that you love next to you and things like that. So I think this in a way is, is like a wake up call for a lot of people to, to open their hearts and to kind of see problems in a different way and to, find, to, to, to try to find the positive sides of, of every single um the struggle that you do you go through what do i do at home in this difficult time when we are uh, all at home can't go outside well uh, i'm pretty busy i do exercise in the morning uh, for one hour i do flow bow with norwegian national ballet then for one hour i do class again with norwegian national ballet after that uh, i started to learn how to sew and then uh, yeah, I started to sew uh, ballet bags and uh, little makeup bags and I find out that I really enjoy it. Uh, I also practice piano every day, which I normally don't have time. Um, again, I only started to learn, but it's uh, it's just an amazing hobby. Um, we are uh, in contact with Royal Ballet School every single day, planning for the future, discussing all the students. So uh, we are actually working, we are planning to give classes over internet every single day. And uh, I do cook, not much, but uh, I do. <laughs> and um, can't wait uh, actually to go outside and uh, start working again and go and teach my wonderful students from the Royal Ballet School. First, I was very devastated to hear that our performances will be cancelled. But then I kind of calmed down and realized that actually this quarantine is an opportunity to dive into the visual world of the world of social media and to film some of the projects I've been thinking about, like online workouts and online classes. So basically like everyone and like people in other professions we are now working from home and i'm of course doing my ballet classes every day and i'm doing my cardio workouts and some work for my stamina just running and jumping and i also try to maybe improve some small aspects of my ballet technique 
every day, like point work, which is possible to do in home conditions, and some muscle strength, which is again absolutely possible to improve. Well, again, the rules are the same as in all the countries, I would say. We are allowed to go for a walk, as you see, obviously, but we are not allowed to go close to two meters from each other. And uh, we are, all of the shops except for the groceries are closed and all of the cafes, of course. And yeah, and they are closing the public transport, they are closing the subway, and closing the buses and all of the public transportation. So yeah, everyone's trying to really stay inside and not affect anyone. So and I just wanted to wish everyone to stay safe and healthy and say that we we are in this together and everything will be fine eventually. I, I believe it and we all believe it and we have to believe. Hi guys, I'm Aidan O'Brien and I'm a dancer with the Royal Ballet. So I'm lucky that the Royal Opera House has provided us with a load of like online content. So that includes daily ballet class, um, strength and conditioning, Pilates and yoga. Um, also, if I fancy a little bit more, um, I tend to just go on Instagram Live or YouTube and find hit sessions or other yoga types that I've not done before. It's a great opportunity to try something new as well. Um, yeah. So I'm a huge foodie, naturally, um, as you can see. Um, so for me, like cooking and baking is something that I love to do. And now that I've got all this time on my hands, I've literally been doing it 24-7. Um, so I've actually set up my own Instagram account, Kitchen Aiden. Go check that out if you want. It's just got a load of recipes that I've just been doing. Um, challenge myself as well, because obviously just going to the supermarket once a week means that I don't have like the option to just do whatever whenever so I got really creative with that too so yeah it's been really exciting filming and um, making recipes is something I've always wanted to do so this is a great opportunity to do it but unfortunately due to the circumstances um, I'll be missing a lot of performances I've been looking forward to doing this season um, there was a lot of new work and there was also things that I hadn't done yet as a company member um, which is a shame because I always love like challenging my brain and doing something new However, I do know that when we get back, it will just be as exciting. Um, I think also this is a really good opportunity for people who perform and the audiences to find this new appreciation they had for the art form that we may have forgotten. So I know personally I'm really excited to get back and performing. How am I keeping sane? That's a really good question. I think I'm keeping sane. Um, I've definitely had my moments. I'm sure most people have. Um, however, I do live with three friends, which has been amazing. We've all lifted each other up if one of us hasn't felt great and had a bad day. Um, also, my cooking has kept me sane. Um, I always look forward to the next meal. And there's always something good to watch on TV or Netflix. So, yeah. Lastly, I'd like to just say, um, if anyone's struggling to try and keep positive, um, I know it's so much harder and so much easier said than done. However, um, now is a really good time to focus on something else in your life and if you do have days where you're not feeling productive and you haven't done anything, that's absolutely fine. We all have them. Um, and all the dancers out there, um, it's our time now to prove that we're not just one trick ponies. Uh, pick up a new passion, find something else that you can do and just prove that to yourself and yeah, enjoy and thanks to everyone who um, is doing their bit to get through this. Um, the first cases that showed up in Paris um, popped up around early January. There were two cases and they were pretty well contained until the end of January where the numbers really started going up. Um, restrictions and confinement was put in place um, countrywide in France about three weeks ago and um, that meant that we weren't allowed to leave the house except for essentials, which meant going to the grocery store, taking a walk around to get some exercise in the day, um, and really just staying home as much as possible. Um, so I'm really hoping, as France has one of the highest case numbers in the world right now, I'm really hoping that this confinement will lead to a decrease in new cases each day. Um, I was really lucky and I was able to get on a flight quite early after they announced the confinement in France. So um, I was able to fly back to my parents' home and I was in self-quarantine for two weeks to make sure we were taking all the necessary precautions to keep everyone safe. Um, 
I really feel lucky that I'm able to be with my family during this time and uh, just be with other people, actually. Um, I am keeping in shape by doing as much of class as I can every day, I have some space here to work a little bit. Um, it's actually been really nice to connect with other dancers around the world doing their class and learning different ways of approaching the craft that we do every single day. Um, I'm really lucky that here we're around a lot of nature so I can take walks when it's nice out and get the vitamin D that I definitely lack. Um, and I've actually been feeling lucky as well with this kind of like gift of extra time. As scary as this can be, I've been trying to be productive and reading all the books I never have time to read, working on piano, which is something I really love but don't usually have time for. Um, we have heard from our company that the next couple of productions have been canceled, which of course is extremely disappointing. Um, but of course we're trying to put safety first. Um, and it's been really nice to have updates from the company, emails, calls, um, updating us as soon as they have more information about what the next step will be. And we're all anxiously awaiting when our new start date will be given to us. Um, it's of course always disappointing when a production gets canceled. I was really looking forward to learning The Season's Canon by Crystal Pite, which is a piece I've never danced before for our tour going to Australia. And I really hope that at some point I'll be able to learn this. So we pretty much went into quarantine uh, since March 13th and have been in quarantine for almost a month now. Uh, we had to cancel all uh, rehearsals, performances, guest teachers. We had to postpone uh, one of our premieres, which was going to be Anna Karenina. Um, and we can't realistically plan when um, everything's going to pick back up um, unless we know when the crisis is over. So everyone's in a holding pattern right now. We are officially on vacation. Um, so we're, we're still trying to encourage artists and dancers to stay in shape as much as their home space and situation allows them to. I haven't picked up any new hobbies. Um, I like reading, so I've had more time to read, to do a little bit of writing too. Occasionally I play ukulele and jaw harp. So there's a little more time to do that and, and to catch up on some sleep. There's still a lot of work to do, so it's not like it's a vacation vacation. Um, there's still some future planning and, and to catch up on some work. So it, I know uh, companies are struggling, people are struggling, we are struggling. Um, my wish for all of us would be that we would recover from this. It's going to be hard, painful, and, and financially very difficult. But I hope that we can recover from this, that we are resilient and that we could thrive again. Take care of yourselves. Greetings from Estonia. I send you my very best and see you. Bye. Something about three weeks ago, we've been asked to stop working and to stay at home due to the virus. I found this situation almost very unreal and suddenly most of the people had to change their daily routine to still be able to work. However, ballet requires a lot of physical activity in ballet studio. Therefore, it's tricky to keep in shape while we're at home. I'm very fortunate to be part of Dutch National Ballet. They're really taking care of us. They're trying to motivate us with everything. They are streaming ballet classes, fitness, Pilates every day. And they also gave us a floor and ballet bus so they can make us feel as comfortable as we can. Well, generally, uh, I'd like to do what my body feels like to do that day. So apart from following the company classes, I'd also like to do my own workout, strengthen the parts of my body that need to get strength. Likely on the social media, there's a huge variety of classes and workouts you can do. So I find it very nice because each day I can try different stuff. I also like to keep my routine 
throughout the day. So for example, I wake up not too late in the morning. I like to do my classes, workouts uh, straight away. So I have all the afternoon three, three, four things uh, I like to do. I think that at the end of the day, being at home is not too bad. As a dancers, we're normally very busy throughout the day and we don't have much time to relax and do things we like. So, for example, I like to read books, listen to podcasts and play some games. Also, another really good thing is that um, my family is also at home, so I have more time and I call them very often. So, this is very good. Um, as I know, there are lots of people in worse situation than me. Um, trying to keep very positive and thinking that we're going through this all together. We did our last performance, or we were supposed to do a performance on March 12th, and we had to cancel that day due to the fact that only 500 people were allowed into the auditorium and we had a sold out performance with 1,300 people approximately, and um, how to say that half of them couldn't come in. So the easiest was to cancel. And I don't think we realized how this would develop, who could. And uh, from there, we um, canceled all performances for the rest of the season. And uh, of course, then also rehearsals. We are allowed to be 10 people in a room, so we have made a schedule for the dancers to sign up for using the studios and we closely monitor that there are not more than maximum 10 there are never more than eight in a room in a big studio and in different studios and then we have like two shifts and make sure that there is long enough time in between so that not too many people will meet in the corridors they're only allowed to be two people in the dressing rooms and we are rather strict. We're asked not to take the elevator, but to walk, not to be in closed rooms, two small rooms. And uh, our workshops are still working because we still hope we, of course, can open again in the autumn. And uh, those who are using the studios, we have video classes recorded that they're using, or I have shared uh, links to many companies in the world who are giving classes and they choose every morning who they want to train with. And uh, those who are training at home, they do the same, of course, uh, trying to find a link and teacher that suits them. And they do the same at home. And we have um, delivered um, mats, dance mats, uh, Harlequin mats to all our dancers. We had an old Marley that, that our stage crew cut into pieces to deliver to all the dancers and also to the older students in the school. And most people picked them up. And for those who couldn't do that, we even delivered it to their doors. As an artistic director, I can't say I have more time, more free time now than before. The days are filled with meetings. Uh, we start with the management every morning. And then uh, I still keep in touch with ballet masters and with communication department. And, and of course, many people want to talk and I continue the yearly evaluations. It's very nice to be able to meet the dancers one by one, talk about the year that passed and also the current situation and the future. So that I think is nice for them and nice for me. And of course, I'm still like every other artistic director looking ahead, working after a plan A, B, C, D. We don't know what the future will give us. And uh, we all, of course, have great hopes that we can be back as soon as possible. But who knows? We have to to um, work with different scenarios. We are lucky here in Finland. We only we are um, subsidized by the government, so we will only have a 10 day layoff, which is fantastic compared to others. And uh, then we go on summer holiday, a paid summer holiday for nine weeks. So we can definitely not complain. So the first thing that I impl implemented to this new home routine was a morning schedule. And um, by doing this, I knew I could get my day started consistently. And that gave me confidence. Uh, and then I could just leave my afternoon open for other possibilities. Um, globally, we have demanding schedules. So... Um, Imitating this and adding in my forms of exercise has helped me have a balanced mindset. 
um, I have to be realistic. Uh, I can't achieve in my kitchen what I know I can achieve on stage and in the studio. So I set myself realistic goals and hopefully I'm achieving them. And with that, it's just giving me that little bit of extra um, help with my health and well-being at the moment. Um, with that, it's incredible to see all the online platforms alive with help, support and guidance for everybody in all walks of life. Um, at Scottish Ballet, we have numerous classes and seminars available to us. Uh, for example, we have floor bar, bar, uh, the ballet class, uh, technique, point work, lectures. Um, I live in an area with good greenlands as well, so I can have my one allowed outdoor exercise there, which uh, really allows me just that little bit of um, connection with normality. Um, we have also have an online drop-in clinic with physiotherapist for any injuries and we're very lucky to have our director supporting and encouraging us with the exploration of courses that may help us in our post-ballet career. It's incredible to see the plethora of things that are online to us at the moment, but the amount of ballet classes that are available to everybody from different companies in different countries uh, allows us to experience that and also to experience the different cultures. It's such an invaluable experience. As an individual, part of a company and part of a community, the most important thing that I do now is to follow the government guidelines. Luckily, I'm at home with my wife and daughter where um, I got to witness my daughter's first steps, uh, which is easily something that I could have missed. So although this really turbulent times, that, that will always be a, a, a golden moment for me in there. As well as that, um, I, have, I have my garden. Uh, I enjoy horticulture and I'm a gardening enthusiast, so um, my garden and the work I do in it really offers me a deeply personal sense of well-being. We have some very strict restrictions here in Spain uh, where we're not allowed to go out except for to buy food and to the pharmacy. Uh, but luckily we've got Oscar, who's our beautiful dog, <laughs> and we are allowed uh, by the government to go out to walk your dog. Luckily, Oscar is a nice big dog who needs plenty of exercise, so we do get to go out uh, twice a day to, to walk him in the park and to have a little run around with him. So that is keeping us uh, safe and uh, healthy and sane. When the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, started or struck uh, in Europe, I was in Leeds. Uh, rehearsing for my new full-length ballet, Mariposa, uh, which is a queer reimagining of Madame Butterfly. Um, and we was due to premiere towards the end of March and then have a, a tour throughout spring and autumn uh, this year. Um, we had to reschedule the production because our composer and our one of our principal dancers were traveling in from Spain and it wasn't safe for them at the time to travel into the UK. So we had to reschedule both the premiere and the tour. As a choreographer, it's very hard to continue working from home if you haven't got uh, your, you know, your dancers and the studio uh, to to be making work on. Uh, but uh, you know, you try to, to you try to stay uh, in shape. I work out every morning, a uh, mix of ballet, bar, yoga, pilates, whatever the body feels like doing. I'm finding many ways to fill up all of this spare time. I watched uh, the entire Game of Thrones, the entire eight seasons, in just under seven days. I hadn't seen the show and now I have a horrible, terrible void <laughs> and uh, a low sadness uh, that the show's finished. Emotionally, being in lockdown feels like a, like a roller coaster. Like some mornings you wake up or I wake up and uh, you feel super euphoric and motivated and you get up and you're like, yes, I'm going to learn Mandarin online today and I'm going to take a life drawing class and I'm going to, to, to read all these books and I'm going to do all these things and I'm going to be really productive. And then other days you wake up and you can't even get out of bed or you're just laying there on the sofa and you don't, you don't feel like doing anything and everything feels a little bit pointless and you're frustrated and angry. Uh, there's no work and you can't do anything really, really uh, stuck at home. So uh, it's, it's up and down. The first thing I'll do when this ends is uh, run out of home and jump in the ocean because it's very, very hard to be able to look at it and to see it from your window, but to not be able to swim in it. That's, that's really tough.
But it is Spain, so every day at 1 o'clock it's time for vermouth. And now we come into the balcony when the sun is shining and uh, have a little apero <laughs> with uh, Oscar. And, you know, it's a little relief for quarantine every day. We here, here at the Marinsky Theatre did our last uh, performance on the 17th of March. Um, since then we've not been back to the theatre and our venues have been closed, unfortunately. Uh, as with everywhere else in the world too, of course. And the dancers are all sent home. We've been on actually vacation time for the past three odd weeks. And we're all trying to do our own classes in our flats, staying in shape, you know, stretching like everyone's doing. Uh, all dancers from various companies around the world. Nice to see on Instagram, everyone keeping in shape. Um, and well, what can I say? Here in Petersburg, we're allowed outside. Um, Moscow is worse affected than Petersburg currently by the outbreak. Uh, and we have quite a, lot, quite a fair bit of liberty. We're not stuck entirely. Uh, but I, I, I heard that actually there'll be more restrictions coming in shortly to try and curb any spike in infections. So right now we're allowed out. We can go for a walk, go shopping. Whatever, you know, obviously for food, I mean. Um, and hopefully, I really hope this will all be, be over as soon as possible. Um, what can I say? I wish you all lots of health and stay well. And I hope we'll be back dancing as soon as possible. A month and a bit ago, I did my last performance and I retired. And I had an amazing celebration, amazing party with my colleagues and bosses and everybody. And then after that, I left. I came to Rio to open my studios. And obviously I had to postpone the opening and, uh, and I've been in my flat for a month. Usually here I get out once a week to buy food. And luckily I still, I can still use uh, my studio on my own to do my training. So I've been keeping the routine going. In the mornings I go there and I train on my own. And once a week I go out to catch a bit of sun and to buy food. And I'm trying to help my parents a little bit, buying things for them as they are a little bit older. And I'm working on my book as well. I've been writing a book for four years. And now finally I have this proper big time to finish the last chapters. And it's been very useful for me actually to have the concentration to sit down and to let you know my brains work properly and what I wanted to say and how I feel. So it's been super useful. And uh, what I've been saying to my friends is that it's amazing to see everybody dancing and doing classes and training. And uh, in fact, myself, I did, I, I've told a class last week and which was very much fun. A friend of mine from the US invited me to teach a class for her project and it was fun. It was live on my Instagram, a lot of people joined in, it was super fun. But I realized that uh, a lot of dancers are jumping a lot inside their houses and their flats and it's amazing, but just be careful out there because you don't have the proper floor and the space that you need and doesn't look like you're gonna have a show tomorrow or next week. So keep going the way you can, but be careful. Uh, not to get yourself hurt and also the level of anxiety we need to be sane here to get through this um i think so i think the rest the right thing to do is to stay at home watch the news listen to the doctors to the specialists the people that study to guide us through this and wait because it's the best thing we can do if you can help somebody else buy food or you know, do shop, do shop for them if they are older and, you know, just do what you can. But I think it's a moment that we must wait. And pretty soon we're going to be back together doing what we love the most, which is dance. And I'm, you know, excited to see you guys in July, August. I will be back in London and uh, I will be excited to see you all over there and to see what's going on. Please let me know. Send me news, send me messages, and I love you guys. And congratulations, Dance Europe, for everything you did. Big kiss. Bye. Uh, our theater, unfortunately, closed in the middle of March. And it was the week after our 
premiere of our junior company program of Unboxing Ballet 2. And they also cancelled our second touring program of Grimm. And it just still feels like a nightmare and because we really wanted to perform these programs as as much as we could but it's not possible anymore my housemates went home so I stayed alone for a week and and then with my family we thought that the best decision for me was to go back to Italy to go back home so I made it. It was a really long travel and it took like a whole day to go back to Venice, but I made it and now I'm here and I feel more safe and more comfortable and it's just like it's been the best decision for me, I feel. And here we are all in quarantine because the whole country is in quarantine, so we can't go outside just like we can go out just for um, to go to the doctor or to the hospital or uh, to the supermarkets and just like that. And if we go out, we have to fill out a form where we write where are we going, where are we from, uh, where we live and how we are traveling by. And I feel it's a bit stressful and different from normal life of course but i also feel that maybe the quarantine is probably um, the best way to stop the spread of the virus fortunately um, our company started streaming some pilates and ballet classes and also some strength and conditioning classes and it was really nice because then we could keep our muscles working and and yeah also the difficult thing is that we don't have space in our houses like it's really difficult and it's not the same as before of course but it's still something so in my normal day um, I usually do a Pilates class in the morning so at 10 a.m. Or also I do a workout before class and then we have the ballet class at 11 and I like doing classes uh, with point shoes from the bar so I can really work on the strength of my ankles and also in the balance and yeah it's really helpful for me and then after that I do a lot of stretching and also meditation it's really working for me because then I keep I can keep my mind really relaxed and I don't start thinking about the virus too much. I really drink a lot of water because here it's it's quite summer, I feel. It's really weird, but it's already 25 degrees, so I really need to keep my my body really hydrated because it's really important for us and and I also um, try to eat as healthy as I can because it's really important to keep our mind, of course, but also our bodies really healthy. And I really hope to go back to our normality soon, to go back to Amsterdam and to our theater to start rehearsing again. This is my hope, so I wish you to stay healthy and take care and stay home and stay safe and we are strong and we can do it bye